Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're making liquid oxygen. Oxygen is one of the resources you have to really struggle to try to maintain within your base. There are a couple ways to go about achieving it. You can use algae to try to produce oxygen in your base, but algae really only seems to be readily present in the, in the core portion of the map. And as you use all that up and have to expand out farther, sometimes you can find pockets in different places, but it becomes an unreliable method of trying to keep oxygen in your base. You can use the algae, de algae deoxidizer early on in order to produce oxygen, but that starts to become a bit of a struggle, and then you need to find other methods of finding oxygen. One of the things you might want to consider is creating liquid oxygen by converting contaminated oxygen into, into clean liquid oxygen. I have a simple setup here in this base that I've, uh, I've put together in order to, to, to help transform the, the contaminated oxygen. In this little section of the base up here, this was just outside, I have a very high con concentration of contaminated oxygen. This is sitting at 9.8 to 9.9 .9 kilograms per, per tile, which is a, a very large amount. It's produced by the contaminated water, so it kind of replenishes itself over time as long as I keep it sealed in here. This small space is getting to be highly concentrated, so I set a pump out here that we can use to pump the contaminated air in. This contaminated air flows in and goes through a series of thermal regulators. Each thermal regulator drops the temperature of the contaminated oxygen by 14 degrees. The starting temperature it tends to be around, in this particular pocket, is around 32 degrees Celsius. In order to get the contaminated oxygen, though, to condense into liquid oxygen, we need to get the temperature down below negative uh, 183 degrees Celsius. So to do that, we run it through a series of regulars, each of which decrease the temperature by 14 degrees. This is a hugely power-intensive process, so it's not necessarily the most efficient unless you can find a mechanism to produce a lot of power or store a lot of power. I have a series of, of uh, battery banks that I have set up for that purpose, a couple of treadmills, a hydrogen generator, a coal generator, and then uh, more, another battery segment up here, but it will still t tend to burn out my power relatively quickly. So these, each one of these thermoregulators does tend to, to produce or t does tend to draw a lot of power. In here, if we look in the gas overlay, you can see I have a pipe running into the green intake port on each of the thermoregulators, coming out of the white output into the green of the next one, and so on and so forth, so that the flow just continues all the way down each one of the pumps. It ends in the small contained room that I have that I kept sealed with no door for access because I don't want anyone going in and out. And I placed a gas vent that will let us uh, that will let the, the gas leave. However, by the time it gets to this end, it's actually liquid that will drop out. And we'll also find that we're going to get pieces of solid uh, carbon dioxide. Now, these will stay as a solid material as long as they stay contained within this compressed room, uh, in part because the gas pressure above it is going to stay high enough that these aren't allowed to melt and then turn into, uh, into gaseous state. So if we flick the switch and turn on the whole system... I'm going to set it at fast speed so it goes through quickly. But you can see there's a, there's a flow that's going through each of these, and at the other end... We've got droplets of liquid oxygen that are dropping out of this vent and pooling at the bottom. The temperature of this liquid oxygen is very extreme. It's at minus 184 degrees Celsius. And as it sits in the room, it will it will shift down to the point where it gets to its boiling temperature, and it will go back into a gaseous state and start to fill the room until there's an amount of pressure in here that stops it from doing so, usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000, uh, 2000 per tile. We have a really strong flow coming through here now and getting a good buildup. Because of the extreme temperature of this gas, we can't use it directly. It would turn our whole base into a refrigerator. So I have this set up to, uh, I have a pump here in case we get enough buildup of liquid oxygen, I could move it to another holding tank. This isn't currently connected to anything because I found that this one tank has been enough based on the amount of power that I have to actually run this system. I also have in here a gas pump that I'm using to move it into an area where I'm, where I'm condensing steam so that I can try to build up pressure of the gases in here at a more reasonable temperature. You can see in here they're, more, they're closer to 40 degrees Celsius. It still takes time for that to happen, but when it's, uh, but then from within this space, I don't have a pump set up here now, but when I, I can set up a pump in this space and then move that out into the broader base in order to make more, uh, more ready use of the oxygen that's in here. We can also run this through a, a series of further thermal regulators to turn the, the oxygen into, uh, into solid oxygen by freezing it. However, that doesn't seem to have as many applicable uses because the or the uh, the duplicates don't seem to want to pick up these frozen chunks so much. Uh, and then you would have to have a place for them to come in and get them anyway. The liquid state seems to be a little bit more useful because it will store in here and, and maintain its liquid state as long as there's sufficient pressure in the room. 
but it will also allow us to make use of it because as it expands into a gas, we can pump it into other areas using the gas bomb. Hope you find these videos useful and this just comes into handy in your base. You might be able to use this to try to supplement the oxygen that you're getting from other sources. I wouldn't try to use it directly though because your duplicates will freeze and you could do damage to your plants if, if you don't do something to try to warm it first. You can alternatively just let it sit within this room and over time if you aren't pumping any more into the space, the gas that's in here will warm up and come back to a more reasonable temperature because the temperature in the tiles around it is, uh, is a little bit more temperate. As it comes back to a more usable temperature, you can then pump it out into your space and make better use of it. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.